What's up, guys? Welcome back to PBNJ. I'm here with Brian. We're going to do uh, our first update uh, for Comic-Con. Uh, it's coming up in a month. Uh, a lot of news has been coming pretty pretty heavy over the last, I would say, last week. I think since Monday, is every day, there's been some new announcements and stuff. So uh, we're going to go over a, a couple of the big ones that have come out this week. So uh, oh, what's up, Brian? What's going on? Hey, how's it going? So this is what, like my fourth year not going to Comic-Con? Yeah, it's something like that. Now. Yeah. <laughs> We're always like, oh, we'll get Brian back down here. We'll get him. So far, no. <laughs> but I'll, I mean, it's yeah. a big, it's a big trip for you, right, to come down from Frisco and uh, take the time off and everything. Yeah, it was a lot easier before, where I would just meet you at your house and then we just carpool down there. That was a lot better. Yeah, now you would have to fly, probably fly down to San Diego, really come pick you up, and fly, you know, fly back Sunday or Monday, and yeah, it's more, yeah, it's more of a hassle, but. Uh, yeah, real quick, uh, uh, me and, I've been going to Comic-Con forever. Brian went with us a few years in a row, and uh, it's pretty, I mean, it's awesome. It's a great time. And uh, with all this news coming out, uh, I'm getting excited. Like, I'm, start, I'm starting to get back in the mode. Like, it's starting to kick in now. I'm starting to think about, you know, what, like starting to get my plans together and, and trying to think about what, what I want to see on what day. And the schedule's not out yet, so we can't, can't, I can't get too complicated. But um, there, there are some, some, some cool stuff being announced. If you're into toys and stuff, um, action figures, the the exclusives, like they're they're pumping those out every day, and I'm not gonna go over those because there's just way too many, and I'm not a, into the action figures or anything, so I couldn't tell you the importance of them and stuff. Uh, but there are two two pretty big announcements that uh, that I'm excited for, and one of them is uh, about Hall H. Now, as Brian knows, getting to Hall H takes is is such a huge effort. You have to camp outside you have to get the wristbands and all that stuff but um this year marvel comics is skipping or not marvel comics but the marvel cinematic universe is skipping this year and they were normally the the headliner for saturday night it was always a saturday like five o'clock huge huge panel and because of uh infinity war that you know that just dropped uh a couple months ago they don't want to announce anything any movies um until infinity war part two comes out next year because it'll spoil the movie obviously so they're not going to be here this year, and that was a bummer. But it opened the door for other studios who who were coming pretty regularly, but they've they've skipped out the last few years. Um, so those studios being uh, Sony, Paramount, Universal, uh, Universal slash Bloomhouse, which Brian, you know, that's the uh, the Purge and those horror movies. Yeah, and uh, Fox are uh, coming back. And uh, Fox has been gone a couple years. Universal's been gone for a long time, four or five years. I think Bloomhouse may have had one or two a long time ago. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, they they had been gone because they didn't want they didn't want to compete with you know Marvel and Disney and stuff. And it costs. I mean, we don't know obviously, but it probably costs a pretty penny, right, Brian, to rent out one of these halls for the the movie stuff. Yeah, I bet. I mean, to get the actors out there, they have to put together a package to show the people and freebies. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, a lot of planning and everything. Yeah. And so a lot, and then also, um, as you know, uh, as we've learned in the past that if a movie studio brought a movie that just wasn't up to snuff and people just went online afterwards and went on Twitter, you know, Facebook and were just like, dude, this movie looks like trash. I mean, it would kill a movie. It killed a few movies. Um, they, uh, uh, especially a long time ago. Uh, I remember way back in like an 05, you remember that movie, uh, Stealth? Yeah. Yeah. So the really, one. yeah, the Jamie Fox and Jessica Biel, they they brought that movie and it and it did not belong at Comic Con. Here, it's, it was just a summer popcorn Michael Bay style movie, and we and I remember we were just like, what is, what is this doing here? And and the crowd ripped the movie to shreds, and people went online afterwards, and it, the movie just dug itself in a huge hole and it didn't recover. And so. Uh, film studios now are, are are a lot more selective, a lot more careful about what movies they show. So a lot of them just decided not to go anymore. But with um, Marvel and also no Star Wars uh, panels, it opened a huge hole. So these these panels are coming back. Sony will be back uh, to promote the Tom Hardy Venom movie and the um, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse animated movie coming out in December. Have you seen the trailer for that one, Brian? Well, I, I have. I've seen it. Um, it's more like a teaser. I mean, it's just like a, a short clip of him like just diving off a building. Yeah. And it looks like it's Miles Morales. Miles Morales, right? yeah. Yeah. And um, they released a longer one uh, a little while ago. It looks really cool. It looks really yeah. cool. And it's based off the Marvel comic event from a couple years ago 
where uh, a bunch of Spider-Man from different universes had to join forces to fight these dimensional vampire, interdimensional vampires, uh, basically. And they go to different universes and they eat the Spider-Man that universe. So you have Miles Morales will be here and then Peter Parker will also be in it. And there's going to be just a ton of different Spider-Man. The comic, it was really, really cool. And the trailer looks really cool. So I'm actually excited to see that. And then Venom looks cool too. So I, I, they haven't said if, if Tom Hardy will be there. I mean, that'd be cool. I don't think he's, I don't think he's been there yet. Um, I don't remember seeing him for like Dark Knight. Uh, so it'd be cool to see Tom Hardy. You know, he's one of my favorite actors going right now. Paramount, which uh, hasn't been there in a little bit, is going to be promoting uh, Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, I saw the trailer and it looks like a typical, you know, Transformers. I do like that they have the classic designs, though. Like that Bumblebee in the oh, in the actual bu- uh, bug car. Okay. Yeah. And then they show Starscream, but like in the cartoon. Mm-hmm. So it actually, they actually went back to the old classic designs. And I was like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. So um, we'll see what they what they have at Comic Con. So one um, studio you didn't mention um, that's usually there is Warner Brothers. Are are they there this year on Saturday? Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're gonna be there in their usual spot. They'll be the the morning the, the morning one, ten or eleven a.m. So okay. yeah, I didn't list them because they're they're always there. They haven't. They, 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 I don't remember them skipping. Um, they're yeah. gonna be they're gonna be showing uh, Aquaman, Wonder Woman. Two Wonder Woman two probably Shazam and maybe that uh, Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts yeah yeah probably be that one as well I'm guessing that's cool yeah and then um, Universal Bloomhouse will be back they're gonna uh, they I thought they're gonna show like Peter Jackson's movie that Mortal Engines movie uh, but actually sounds like they're gonna concentrate on uh, Halloween and Glass the sequel to um, Unbreakable to Unbreakable and uh, Split from mm-hmm. a couple years ago. That, so they're going to focus on those two. Uh, so it looks like the Peter Jackson one, they're going to kind of scoot aside. And that one doesn't look very good to begin with either, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I like Peter Jackson. And then he, he's never been to con, uh, but they, they've promoted all, you know, the Lord of the, not the Lord of the Rings movies, that was too long ago, uh, but the Hobbit movies and stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm always, it was always cool to see his stuff, but Mortal Engines just doesn't look very good. Have you seen the trailer for that one? No, I, I haven't even heard of the movie before. Yeah, it's based off a young adult novel. Um, where it's like in, it's post-apocalyptic, but it's when society is kind of rebuilding itself, mm-hmm. and, and these cities they 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 live on giant tread. It's pretty, they're like moving cities, and the big cities like and I think in the movie they're gonna focus on London. Like, will eat up a smaller city for its resources, but it's 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 young adult. It's obvious when you see the trailer. There's like all these. So it- Good. So the lead actors are like teenagers. Yeah, they're like these good-looking kids, and you're like, ah, man, I don't care. So <laughs> yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, uh, you know, cause I, I'm a big, you know, I like Peter Jackson, but this one I'm not as excited about. Uh, and then also Fox will be back, and kind of weird. Um, they're going to focus heavily on the Predator, which uh, which is cool. That's that's cool. Uh, but they also have two X Men movies, The New Mutants and uh, Dark Phoenix, and it doesn't sound like they're bringing either of them. So don't know what that means for the movies like i would assume that means they're bad right that's if they're not going to show them right so i mean i was like oh yeah fox will be back they'll show x-men they'll show both of them and then whatever and then and then predator people cool in there and then it's just they announced that no it's just gonna be predator so i'm like oh okay well i guess maybe i guess they don't want to show the x-men movies so it's not not uh doesn't inspire any any confidence in that so and, and and I think for Predator, they're going to really have to sell that movie because that in, initial trailer doesn't look that good. Yeah, they didn't show anything. Like, yeah, it just it just was. I remember seeing yeah, same thing. I saw it and I was like, uh, I don't know what this, how this is gonna go. I, I I am. I mean, there's a lot of talent behind it. You know, the actors are good, and then the director, uh, Shane Black, he he directed movies like uh, did Iron Man three. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and some other ones, and he was actually in the first Predator too. He was the guy with the glasses. Okay. So I'm like, well, if anyone knows about the original, you know how to get that original feel, it'd be him. So um, I, I still, I'm still cautiously optimistic about it. Uh, let's see what they show at Con. So yeah, that was the first big uh, announcement with these studios um, that have been missing for the last few years that are, are back. So I'll probably, you know, Hall H is always fun. We always do it on Saturday. Um, so I'm sure we'll see uh, we'll see all this stuff, and, and you know I'm I'm bummed there's no Marvel, but I get it, you know they don't you can't really spoil anything in 
if they're just going to come out and show the same stuff over and again, it doesn't really accomplish anything. So I'll just wait for them for next year. Yeah, and, and for me, I, I always think um, that they don't need to be at Comic-Con anymore because they have D23. I mean, it's every other year, but I, I think it's more controlled. You know, like we, we always joke about like how nothing gets out of there from the D23 panels. Right. So it's more controlled. Like they show what they want. And you know you can you can write or tweet about it all you want, but you just can't film anything. Right. Um. So, I I always think I always thought that it's better to have it there instead. You know, for for all the Disney like movies and you know for Star Wars and Marvel and all that stuff. So, I mean, for for them to not go to Comic Con this year, I mean, like everything you said, it's fine. Like I, I get it. They're, if they show anything, right, people are gonna just uh, tear apart every single frame of that trailer. For Infinity War Part Two, so it's better to not show anything and just just have people wait. Yeah, um, especially for that movie. Yeah. I mean, it's the way the movie ended. Like the the hype behind it, come the hype is going to be huge. So they don't want anything coming out. Right. No spoilers or nothing. So it's, yeah, it's a smart move, and yeah, and it also builds up uh, excitement. You know, to to skip a year or two, and then mm-hmm. if it's there every year. You know, I don't want to say it gets old, but you know, skip a year it just makes everyone even more excited for next year like oh man next year's gonna be huge next year so i mean it's okay i i, I didn't when they i was bummed at first but now i'm like oh you know what? it's okay I'm, uh, i can uh i can wait and see other stuff and then there was a uh, one more uh, announcement and not so much with programming but then brian was, he he already uh, appreciated this rule change <laughs> um well it's not really a rule change but the front in the in so right in front of the convention center is harbor drive and it's a it's a big street it's a really it's one of the main streets of San Diego. You drive down Harbor Drive. It goes down the whole coast pretty much. And right in front of the convention center, right in front of the hotels and Gasland. Crossing the street to get to and from the convention center because of that street is really, really difficult. Police are out there. Uh, they have to wave through traffic. And then they have to stop traffic for like 15, 20 minutes to let people cross back and forth. The people in the cars are pissed because they're sitting there and it's backed up for a mile. And it's so slow for them. And then... For us trying to cross the street, we get all bunched up on this little sidewalk, and there's not a lot of room, right, Brian? It's really awkward. No, it's, it's really crowded, and sometimes a light rail train will pass by, so we got to wait for that, too. Yeah. and so, Yeah. You know, you're standing there, and it's hot. It's in the summer, and you have to, like, everyone's carrying their bags, bags of stuff. Everyone's bumping into each other, and it gets really, like, there's a lot of people start yelling at each other, and there's cops all over to try and keep things moving but there's just so many people crowded in this little spot so this year what they're going to do is they're going to block off harbor drive and harbor drive will close starting at if you're coming down if you're coming south and so you're heading west to east uh it's going to stop right in front of the marriott and then so if you're going to come down you're going to have to u-turn at that spot and coming the other way coming east to west uh it's going to stop in front of the hilton hotel and once you get there same thing you're going to have to Right under the bridge, the walkover bridge. Yeah, uh, you got the U turn. So, oh man, that's gonna be the best. <laughs> we can just walk in front and just walk across the street with just walk across with no issue. It's not gonna be crowded. There, it'll it can take like if let's say if I wanted to run to the room and back real quick, it can probably save me a half hour, easy. Just just to walk across that street, I'm not I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna walk. Right. And oh, uh, that. I really, really, after reading that, I was like, why didn't they do this five years ago, six years ago? I mean, obviously, it's easier said than done, right? They have to get permission from the city and stuff. But, man, yeah. it's just going to yeah. open it all up. There's not gonna, It's not going to get crowded anymore. We can just walk across without get fear of getting hit. Um, no one's going to run into each other. And, and to, to also add to that is um, a, a year or two ago, Comic-Con added RFID scanners to the badges. And to walk into the convention center, you have to scan in. You scan in at a, at a checkpoint, it'll, and it says it's good, you can go in. They're not checking for the name or anything, that's impossible. But as long as it scans green, you're good. And this year, because they're, they are closing that street off, and they're extending it into the gas lamp, they're adding the checkpoints to that area as well. So you can't even cross the street unless you have a badge. So all those people who, who all the fans and stuff who didn't have a badge... And couldn't go in. They used to just hang out in that area, and they used to hang out in front of the sidewalk. Now they can't, and they have. If they're going to hang out, they're going to be in the gas lamp, and then also at the hotel. Like to come in from that way, um, you can have a scan in at the Marriott, and at the at the Hilton, like not at the hotels, but a little closer. Mm-hmm. 
you have the scan in there as well. So all of area where people were just hanging out and they're passing out flyers and there were cosplayers just taking pictures and stuff. Now they can't be there. So it's going to cut foot traffic again in half. And I know, Brian, you appreciate this, right? Yeah. I mean, back then, um, you know, before they close off the street, we're limited to just the sidewalk. And like you said, it's really crowded out there, especially at the end of the day when everyone's leaving. But even during the, the morning and afternoon, too, um, everyone's just standing around because, you know, most of them are cosplayers. So they're just like hanging out and talking to other cosplayers or they're waiting for people to take pictures of them and stuff. So, I mean, it, it's nice, but they didn't really have a designated area for them to do that. I mean, and I always thought, you know, they should have a place designated for that, like like grassy area by outside of Hilton. That's like the perfect place for it. Right. Um, but I guess because there's no shade or anything like that, and sometimes uh, uh, some some movie studios or game company would rent that space. Remember, like the the zip lining for Batman was there one year, but yeah, usually it's not that place is like empty. Um, but now I guess like people camp out there for Hall H, but there's still a, an area you can like kind of rope off or fence off where you know you can make it like a meeting spot for cosplay players. But because it was a free for all, it was always really crowded. And then the stairway that goes up to where you pick up your, your badge, that place gets crowded too because everyone's just sitting around and just hanging out there too. Yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that stair, that stair, uh, that big stairway. Yep. Yeah, that was a big cosplay hangout. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, they can't, they won't be able to hang out there. And on one hand, I feel bad because like you know they couldn't get in and stuff like that, and they're just ha- they're just having fun, right? They're not hurting nobody, but man, they they <laughs> they get in the way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or you're trying to walk, you're, you know, you're trying to walk and you have all these giant anime swords and guns <laughs> and these huge costumes and you're like trying to be nice. I'm not I'm like, hey, I'm not trying to push their costume and break something. But at the same time, I'm like, you got to move. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get to this panel and you're in the way. So it'll it'll really cut down on foot traffic and make it less crowded. And anything to help streamline uh, the experience is, is a good thing because there's just so many people. And you know, again, I was like, man, they should have thought of this, you know, years ago. But you know, it's getting there. Uh, they're they're improving every year to help make you know get the process a, a little smoother. And, and I think also too, they're watching other conventions and how they do it. Like D twenty three, they had the they had the scan in first. Remember, right? You had to scan in your badge to get in to get in line. So they incorporated that. Um, then at, at WonderCon was the first one to have. They actually implemented it at WonderCon. They checked it out. And also, I. Uh, you, know, you didn't go to WonderCon this year, but I think I told you right where they they also did that where they extended the the badge scan ins even further out. It's like where that big dome is, right? Yeah, where, where the dome where is, and then is. yeah, and that big fountain that's where they all used to hang out. Yeah, um, they extended it past that, so you could not get in unless you had a badge. You couldn't just come in and hang out. And I think that was the test run, and I think they liked what the results were, and it was it was cool for us too because like it was just a lot of room we can we can walk and then they, they also cosplayers did have a designated area off to the side so I, so they were over there taking pictures and stuff and we could walk and then we could go over and take pictures of them if we want but yeah, if you didn't have your badge you couldn't just come and hang out so close and and it really helped it helped a lot so and WonderCon is like a quarter of the size of comic-con right so if if you know if it helped just a little there and just bring that to con it, it would be uh, really helpful so looking forward to that um, i really want to see how that works out and those were two big announcements that came this week there's going to be a lot more coming so we're going to go over it and uh, let you guys know uh some tips and stuff along the way you know as uh as the month goes by so stay tuned and uh we'll see you guys uh, on the next one see you later brian